The Further Education of Oversoul 7 by Jane Roberts, read by Martin John, Afterward of the Gods. Is anyone looking? Zeus asked. Verily no, Christ answered. Are you positive? Would the Son of God lie? Aren't I omnipotent? Christ asked. Aren't you? O oh, Jesus, Zeus thundered. The two of them sat momentarily alone in the green wooden rocking chairs on the porch of the old god's rest home. Silence settled gently about them, but a very particular silence indeed, one so vital that within it all probable sounds seemed ready to emerge. Yet even Zeus's voice, thundering, made no sound that any one human could hear, because it wasn't sounding on the other side of silence. And in the same way, Christ and Zeus rocked contentedly in their godly dimension, invisibly, on the other side of light where no one including over Soul 7, could ever find them. It's always ever so much more peaceful after the visitors leave, Hera exclaimed. She came out onto the porch and peered into the divine distance. I see our own world is back, thank heavens. She sat down and began to rock so that her orange taffeta gown went swish, swish, swish with a sound that no one could hear, of course, but the gods, just like the swish, swish, swish of Muhammad's sword, Christ said. He made the sign of the cross with wrinkled fingers, then sprang to his feet, his gray curls bobbing. Well, the charade is over at any rate, he said. And then, in a voice even louder than Zeus's, he shouted, Ali, Ali, in free, you can all come out now. As Christ spoke, a variety of developments happened simultaneously. Hera, Zeus, and Christ were instantly rejuvenated. The flush of a thousand births turned their skin from paper brittle gray to an idealized glowing texture impossible to describe. Christ stood as a young man, each hair on his head and beard a crisp, lively brown. Zeus, with new, powerful thighs and black beard, was anywhere from sixty to a hundred, yet with such an ancient youthfulness that his vitality was literally of divine proportions. Hera was also magnificently old and young at once, a mother goddess of such stature that Christ called out estatically, Hail, Mother of God! Why, bless you, my son, Hera cried, laughing, and she turned into the virgin mother for him. It won't make any difference that the charade is over, Zeus shouted. Whatever guise people put us in is deceptive, and I'm tired of playing roles. Where's poor Mohammed? Someone should tell him he can put down that damn sword now. And poor Buddha, they're turning him into a mess of jelly when you come right down to it. But Christ yelled boisterously, What difference does it make that doesn't change us? But you're right, let's get about our godly business. These roles are hampering. This time, all together, Hera, Christ, and Zeus shouted, Ali, Ali, in free, 
You can all come out now. Zeus shouted even more loudly, Let the charade be over. And instantly a gigantic flash of divine lightning struck at the god's rest home, coming down from a sky literally infinite that no spaceship could ever find. And, as the lightning struck, sudden tumult began with such a riotous roar that all possible sounds did seem to be sounded, though again these were inaudible, rising up on the other side of silence that divides worlds. And, as the lightning hit, the thousands of gargoyles that decorated the god's rest home began to move. Laughing stone heads grew fleshy. Entwined stone limbs stretched. Angel wings of plaster began to beat. The statues, the wooden carvings of Muhammad's men, the bust of Zorster, and each and every gargoyle above the window castings and around the pillars moved, stirred, and rose to jump, fly, or leap to the garden, so that the building itself dissolved into the forms of all the gods who had formed it. There were future gods and old ones, probable gods, aunt and uncle gods, animal and bird gods, and each shining and unique with its own image. What an edifice that was, Christ said, as one of the gods turned from plaster or wood or stone, edging or turned decoration or whatever into living forms and dropped down beside him. Nectar for everyone, Zeus shouted, and in vast good humor, he added, O oh Christ, do you want wine and fish? Laugh all you want, Christ said. You can play Christ next time. I'm sick of roles that include crucifixions. The godlessness will be back in style with humanity soon, and I'm going to be one of those for a change. That's the trouble. We do have to change with the times, Mohammed said. He came running lightly up from the back garden, heaving his sword into the grass. Buddha was always smartest there, he said. He was always so ambiguous. The divine conversations went on as the gods lounged on the sunny green grass, sipping nectar and each image was spectacular in proportion. The Virgin Mary's voice rose. It's too bad, though, the crucifixion story ruined the whole thing as far as I was concerned. Yet the people always insist that the gods be killed in these dramas in one way or another. Come now, it's all over. Christ said snappishly. I admit it got on my nerves too, but if that's the kind of symbols people need, that's the kind they get. And besides, they are learning. The Virgin Mary turned back into Hera and joined the group just as Pegasus came in for a landing and began to nibble delicately at the grass. Looking up, he said, indulgently, Why such squabbles? There'll be new gods before long. It's in the air. Well, I hope they're better than the old variety, Zeus said. It's not creative at all to be stuck in the same old roles. Maybe the new gods will have more sense so that we can really make something out of them. Christ didn't grow at all, for example. Neither did I, for that matter. But a new magnificent God role that we could really sink our teeth into. Now, wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't it? 
wouldn't it? The question was taken up by all of the assembled gods, wonderingly, yearningly. Impossible, I suppose, murmured Pegasus sadly. Hera said, We can't force people to recognize us as we are. Sometimes I think it would serve them right if we could, Zeus said, laughing. But if they could perceive us apart from the roles, Christ said, dreamily, I mean, if we didn't have to conform to their ideas about us, but if we don't conform, they don't perceive us at all. And all in all, each of us had some excellent qualities. The trouble is that people insist on their idea of specifics, I suppose, to imagine us as superhuman in terms of their species alone. It's understandable enough at their level. But to define us by their ideas of sexuality or race is ridiculous even by their standards. They're really quite unbelievable, Buddha said, arriving, <laughs> I don't know, arriving late as usual. He looked like an Indian guru, a situation he, he redeemed at once by turning into a tree. Quarrelsomely, he said, they twist around everything a good God says. If only they could perceive us as we really are. Just what I was saying, Christ said triumphantly, but it's a lost cause, I'm afraid. Except for nature, Zeus replied, and that's my favorite materialization. Mine too. Let's not forget that, Mohammed cried. It's ever so much more rewarding and creative, Pegasus agreed. But why isn't nature enough for them, Buddha asked. They keep misquoting me as saying that nature is unsavory or that the point of earth life is to get over it like a disease, and then they rant about annihilating desire, and I never said a thing like that. Hera turned into the virgin and said, I probably understand humans better than any of you, and my miraculous conception told the whole tale. They just don't trust nature. They don't like the death part, and they've never been able to see beyond it. Really, it obsesses them. All of nature shouts of new births, yet humans have the greatest difficulty imagining any divinity in nature. I don't understand how they can be that way, but they are. They don't see any divinity in themselves either, Zeus said. At least the Olympian gods were in and out of nature and human nature all the time. But Christ was born into nature just once and yanked out fast. Well, Let's get back to ourselves, Christ said. Everyone's gone. No need to keep up these roles. Still, they could hold such promise, Hera said nostalgically, just as she and all the other gods dispensed with their images and with the personalities that went with them. Their individual awarenesses mixed and merged one with the other, swept through the others, psychologically romped and whirled through mental universes unending. It's time for our nightly check, came the unspoken, on the other side of silence, multi-million thought and each divine awareness turned its attention toward the earth, seeing it 
and all of its parts down to the tiniest particle merging with the mountains, sky, seas, rushing gloriously into each living thing, exulting in the cozy preciousness of earth time. The gods dived exuberantly into the earth, minus images, growing up as trees in a million backyards, as fish in the oceans, as people and insects and animals, they merged with the twilight that came in through Geoffrey's window, flowing through the pages of the manuscript of this book that sat on the table, and the gods continued to give life, form, and substance to the earth. And peace, light, and love. Aloha.